Hi everybody and welcome to another masterclass with me. I'm Sinead. Um, going to do another short one today. I think a lot of people are really enjoying the uh, slightly shorter classes. And today uh, we're focusing on building up to crow pose. So we've done a longer class of this on the platform, but here's a slightly shorter one for those of you that are a little bit short on time. Um, so when we're doing crow pose, uh, there's a few things that we want to think about. Of course, you're, you're instantly going to think like arm and shoulder strength. And yeah, that is a thing. We, we do need to wake that up there. There's a lot to be said for core strength and a hell of a lot to be said for engaging our hip flexors and getting them alive and awake and able to do what they do. Hip flexors are the muscles that help you draw your knee to your chest, say when you're stood up, you know, it's kind of like this movement there. Um, and then of course we want happy wrists. So, uh, which is a really good segue into talking about injuries. Of course, if you do have sensitive wrists, my best advice would be to um, either skip this class, find something else on the platform um, that works for you, or to just listen to how your wrists are moving. So if you've got slightly sensitive wrists, it might be that you can do most of the class on your fists, like so, say if you're in a plank, or you can do it on your forearms, stuff like that. So you just avoid overdoing wrist stuff. Um, and if you've got any other injury, then please do take care of yourself. And yoga is about listening to our bodies, not forcing them into shapes that might not be what the body wants to do today. Great. Anyway, let's begin our practice. So when you're ready to settle into a comfortable seated position and allow your eyes to close. And begin to turn your attention inwards towards yourself, towards your body. And notice how your sit bones are resting into the support that's beneath you. Notice how your spine lifts away from the pelvis, lifts away from the ground and reaches up to the crown of the head. Notice if the face is scrunched up with tension in any place, like around the lips or the eyes or the eyebrows. Let that soften. And then take a few very deep rounds of breath in through the nose and out through the nose. So big inhale in. And a big exhale out. And just a few rounds of breath simply like this, inhaling in. And exhaling out. Just keep breathing for a few more rounds of breath. Now our minds are really good at wandering off. And coming into deep rounds of breath helps us to stay focused and centered in a really calm way. So you might choose to keep your eyes closed. We're simply gonna lean the upper body over to the right side and then draw the chest forwards and bring it over to the left side and then draw the chest backwards. So you're just drawing really big circles with your upper body. And make the circles really nice and big. So you allow yourself to lean off to each side, come quite far forwards and move all the way back. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention about crow, we also want to have nice open hips. And you might feel that as you're doing this, as you're moving around in your seat, that you're able to 
move through tension in the hips. So let's draw the circles the other way. And then definitely close your eyes here because you know what you're doing, right? And begin to draw the circles a little bit smaller. And then a little bit smaller. And then a little bit smaller as if you're literally circling around a really thin bit of thread. And then even smaller still until you actually find your way back to stillness in the center. And take a deep round of breath. Yeah, really nice. Great. So let's start some more movement. So we're going to find our way into all fours position on the mat. We're going to begin by stretching out the wrists in different ways. So to begin with, see if you can turn your fingers to face all the way backwards. So you find this outward rotation, the left uh, fingertips turn out to the left and then all the way back. And then the right fingertips turn out all the way to the right and point backwards. So you're kind of just doing all fours just with your fingers backwards, right? And here might feel like enough of a stretch already um, through the muscles at the bottom of your forearm. Just have a little bit of an engagement at the belly. So we're already taking awareness there. And then take a deep breath in. And then as you breathe out, begin to draw the upper body back, but keep the heels of the hands connected to the ground. So you'll probably feel the stretch in the forearms intensify. And then come forwards again on a breath in. And then as you exhale, just begin to lift the heels of the hands a little bit off of the ground. And then come forwards. And then come back once more and come up onto your fingertips. So you start to feel the stretch all the way through the palms as well. And then come forwards again and then unravel the hands so they come back to normal position. And then let's flip the left hand over. So then the fingers point back, but it's because the palm is facing up. Just take a couple of rounds of breath, allow the pressure to land through the back of the hand in a different way here. And then release. And let's do the same with the right hand. So flip the right hand, fingertips point back, and then you're on the, you've got the palm of the hand facing up. Yeah, really nice. Let that release too. Staying in all fours, just take a nice deep breath in. Begin to lift the tail and lift the chest and you allow the chest to curl open. And then when you find your exhale, squeeze the belly muscles in, hollow the spine, hollow the belly, and lift the shoulder blades up towards the ceiling. Inhale, curve the spine downwards, and let the chest lift up. And then exhale, round the spine, push the ground away, draw the belly muscles in. I'm going to do that a few more times. Nice deep breath in, lift tail, lift chest. And then a deep breath out, round the spine, chin into chest. Couple more times, inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Breath in, let's come to spinal neutral. Tuck the toes, and as you breathe out, simply lift the knees just a little bit away from the ground so they've lifted like an inch off. And you'll already feel that that creates effort, not only through the arms and the hands, but you want to engage the belly muscles so there's effort in the core. If you can tap into the sensation of lifting your pelvic floor, then feel like you can lift your pelvic floor here and roll your belly muscles in just a little bit more. Let's take one more deep breath in. And then when you find the exhale, begin to lift your hips up and back. Yeah, really nice. We found our way into down dog. And of course, we're going to explore, bend one knee at a time, allow the hips to sway side to side, allow each leg to lengthen and perhaps find a stretch out through the side body as well. 
And then we find ourselves in static, in down dog, so in stillness. Take a nice deep inhale. And then sigh the exhale. Do that another time. Take a deep breath in. And then go for a sigh. And we're gonna very slowly begin to walk the feet forwards towards the hands and find our way towards the front of the mat. Bring your hands to your shins, take a deep breath in and let your chest lift halfway. And then as you exhale, begin to lower down, forward fold. Gonna inhale, rise the arms up and let the hands touch above the head. And then when we find our exhale, we'll bring the hands together in front of the chest. Great, cool. So we'll warm up with a few vinyasas. So we're standing near the front of the mat. Take a deep breath in, rise the arms up. And then exhale, forward fold. Hands to shins, breathe in, lift the chest halfway. And then exhale, land the hands, step your feet back into plank. Squeeze the belly muscles in here, take a deep breath in. And then when you find your exhale, you might lower by landing knees, then chest, then hips. Root down through the tops of the feet, glue the pubic bone to the mat and let the chest lift up. You find cobra. Typically my cobra is quite low. You might bring it higher or keep it at the same height as me. And then exhale, body softens. Toes tuck, bring your knees forwards. Now this is a really good movement to focus on today. You've got your bum in the air. You're gonna press the ground away so you lift up to all fours whilst your bum stays up in the air. And then let's lift the hips up and back. Really nice. You're in down dog. Again, you might bend the knees, sway the hips. And then when you're ready to again, walk your feet forwards, come towards the front of the mat. Hands come to shins, inhale, lift the chest halfway. Exhale, forward fold. And then inhale, begin to rise up to standing. Hands touch above the head. Exhale, bring your hands together in front of the chest. Yeah, really nice. We'll do that a couple more times. Inhale, rise the arms up. And then exhale, forward fold. Hands to shins, chest lifts halfway. Exhale, land the hands, step feet back into plank. Take a deep breath in. And then exhale, land the knees, land the chest, land the hips. Root down through feet, root down through pubic bone, let the chest lift up. Exhale, soften. Tuck the toes, knees forwards, bum stays in the air as you press up to all fours. Hips lift up and back. And just take two rounds of breath in, down dog. And you're perhaps beginning to feel the body open up just a little bit more in different ways. And then get your feet to come forwards to the front of the mat. Hands come to shins, breathe in, lift the chest. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, let's rise up to standing. Hands touch above the head. Exhale, hands come together in front of the chest. Really nice, one last time. Inhale, rise the arms up. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, land the hands, plank. Breath in, breath out, lands knees, lands chest, lands hips. Inhale, lifts the chest. Exhale, softens the body. Toes tuck, knees hop forward, squeeze the elbows into the ribs, press up to all fours. Lift your hips up and back. I'm going to take three deep rounds of breath. And then begin to feel how your hands uh, press down into the ground here. See if you can root down through the bases of the knuckles in each and every one of the fingers. And then as you press into the ground, you feel the arms harden a little bit and the whole upper body elongates, the hips lift up and away. As you feel ready to begin to lower the knees, let's find all fours position. Great, so we're gonna play with that um, 
like push up movement a little bit more. So we're going to go for Ardha Chaturanga, half Chaturanga. Hands underneath the shoulders, squeeze the belly muscles in, take a breath in. And then as you exhale, begin to draw the chest forwards, lower down a little. Only so far that when you inhale, you can press your way back up. Really nice. Exhale, lower down, and then inhale, press back up. Yeah, really good. Just two more times. Exhale, only go down as far as you know that you can press your way back up. Really nice. One last time, we exhale, lower, and then inhale, lift. Tuck your toes, lift your hips up and back. When we find our next breath in, we're going to inhale, pick the right leg up. So we haven't done much to open up the hips just yet. So just let the right leg hip, uh, right leg lift up as high as it's going to go. Send the right heel back, take a deep breath in. And then as you exhale, draw the shoulders over the wrists and squeeze your knee towards your nose. And then inhale, pick the right leg up and send it away. Exhale, shoulders over wrists, knee to nose. Couple more times, breathe in, lift up, extend the leg away. Exhale, knee to nose. Last time, breathe in, lift up. Exhale, knee to nose. Land the foot to the space between the hands. Land your left heel behind. Stay lunging in the left knee as you inhale, rise the arms up for warrior one. Great, here we are. So we start to stretch and open up along the left hip flexors here because you've got your left heel landed and your left hip edges forwards. So you might feel what's happening at the front of the pelvis. Don't worry if you don't, it's still happening. Especially if you get, a, get an engagement at the belly muscles and you feel the pubic bone lift up to the belly button, you might begin to feel the length stretch along your hip flexors. Take another deep breath in here. As you exhale, begin to turn the left toes out to the left side, bring your arms at shoulder height. And we find our way into warrior two. So beginning to find a way to open up at the pelvis just a little bit more. Just take a breath in, rise the arms up, let the hands touch above the head. And then exhale, draw down, arms at shoulder height. Inhale, rise the arms up, let the hands touch above the head. And then exhale, draw it back down, arms at shoulder height. One more time, inhale, rise up, hands touch above the head. Exhale, this time keep your front leg straight, bring your arms at shoulder height. Begin to reach your right arm forwards and let the right hand lower down inside the right leg. From there, we begin to turn out to look towards the left side of the room. Yeah, we're finding our way into Trikonasana. Triangle pose. So for some of us, it might be not beneficial or actually just not possible to touch the floor. So you might bring your right hand a little bit higher up your right leg as you turn and look out towards your left fingertips. Make sure that you haven't locked this front knee back so you've got a mini micro bend. Just take one more deep round of breath. On your next exhale, windmill the arms down, let the hands land. Yeah, really good. You're on the ball of the back foot behind. We're going to step the left foot forwards, turn the toes out 45 degrees, sit the bum down, hands together in front of the chest. And we found our way into Malasana. Press the hands together, let the chest lift up. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Take another big breath in. And as you exhale, let your hands land, turn your toes to face forwards and lift your hips up into the air so you find a forward fold. Inhale, let's rise all the way up to standing. Hands touch above the head. Exhale, forward fold instantly. Inhale, lift the chest halfway. Exhale, land the hands and step your feet back into down dog. We're going to inhale, begin to pick the left leg up. 
Send the left heel away. And then as you exhale, draw the left knee to the nose. Inhale, picks the left leg up into the air. You send the heel away. And then exhale, knee comes towards the nose. Couple more times. Breathe in, lift and lengthen. Exhale, knee to nose. One more time, lift up, extend the left leg away. Exhale, draw the knee to the nose and then land the left foot to the space in between the hands. Now I'm just gonna change sides so I can still look at the camera, still see the camera. We're gonna land the right heel to the mat, have a bend at the front knee and inhale, rise the arms up. We're in warrior one on the other side. Yeah, really good. So it's quite a simple flow that helps us to open up and strengthen and waken up in a way that leads us into our arm balance. Land, root through your right heel. Feel your right hip edge forwards. Take one more deep breath in. And then as you exhale, open the right toes out to the right side. Arms at shoulder height, really nice, warrior two. And this is quite a nice way to move into the hip. So we're gonna inhale, extend the front leg, reach the arms up, and then exhale, draw it down, warrior two. Inhale, extend the front leg, reach the arms up, and then exhale, warrior two. Yeah, really nice. Inhale, extend the front leg, reach the arms up. This time, bring the arms out to shoulder height. Keep your front leg long. Reach left arm forwards and then let it lower down inside left leg. Begin to pick the right arm up. Have a look at the right fingertips. If that feels good for your neck and if it doesn't, you can look down, you can look off to the side. Just a couple of rounds of breath. Let's take one more deep breath in. And then when you find your exhale, begin to face the front edge of the mat. You're on the ball of the back foot behind. Edge the left foot out to the left side of the mat. Step your right foot forward. Sit the bum down, malasana. Hands together in front of the chest. Yeah, great, chest lifts up. So I forgot to mention when we did this before, if your heels are lifted, it's not a problem. You can place supports underneath like blocks, bricks, or you might want to edge the feet out a little bit wider, see if that helps lower the heels. Let's take another breath in. And then exhale, hands land, turn the toes to face forwards with forward folding. Inhale, chest lifts halfway. And then exhale, we forward fold. Inhale, we rise all the way up to standing. Hands touch above the head, really good. Exhale, hands come together in front of the chest. Nice, okay, I'll face this way. So we're gonna do another flow. It's gonna incorporate a lot of the same stuff, but just work a bit more on strength as well. Inhale, rise your arms up, let your hands touch above the head. Exhale, forward fold done quite a few forward folds already. So as you inhale and lift the chest halfway and exhale forward fold again, you might find that the back of the body is giving out a little bit more length. Step your way back into plank position. Now I'm gonna face away from you for a moment. What we're gonna do is roll onto the outside edge of the left foot and pick the right arm up into the air. So we found our side plank. Now this might be a bit much for you, and if it is, land your left knee underneath your hip. And if it's too much for your wrist, come onto your forearm. Otherwise we're in our side plank and we're breathing as clearly and as fully as we can. Then we're gonna pick the right knee up into the air. And we're gonna lift the right knee up towards the ceiling. Root down through the outside edge of the left foot. Extend the right leg away, but keep it lifted up in the air. Then keep the right leg lifted in the air as you turn to face the floor. So you're in plank, but you've got your right leg lifted up. Take a breath in here. And then as you exhale, hoist the hips up and back, down dog with the right leg raised. 
take a breath in and then as you exhale draw your right knee towards your right elbow see if you can touch your upper arm inhale lift all the way back up extend the leg away exhale right knee right elbow inhale lift up extend the leg exhale knee to elbow one more time inhale lift up exhale knee to elbow take it or hold it for a breath in here and then as you exhale land the right foot to the space between the hands left heel lands behind and we inhale rise the arms up yeah really good we're back in our warrior one then we're going to open back out into warrior two Even here, you'll notice that, yeah, we're opening up at the pelvis, but the legs have to be strong and the belly can be strong. And from that, we can actually find a lot of stability and strength in a posture that might feel like it's purely for a bit of stretch, you know? Let's do that flow again. Inhale, rise the arms up. Let the hands touch above the head. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, rise the arms up, hands touch above the head. Exhale, warrior two. Really nice, one more time. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, arms at shoulder height. Then reach your right arm to the right side. Lower it down. Trikonasana. Now here, feel like you can draw the belly button in towards the lower spine. So you're really engaged at the belly. Stay here if this is enough for your lower back. If you're feeling good, try lifting the left arm with the left ear. Now, if you're feeling really good, brace quite a lot. Make sure you've got a mini micro bend in your right knee. Begin to pick the right arm up and reach the right arm with the right ear. Just two rounds of breath. So a nice deep breath in and a deep breath out. One more inhale. And then as you exhale, let it soften off really nice. Land the hands, step your way back into plank. Take a deep breath in and then exhale. Let the body lower down. Inhale, chest lifts up. Exhale, body softens. Toes tuck, knees forward. Find your way up to all fours. Lift your hips up and back. So take a few rounds of breath here. Catch your breath if you need to. Shake your head. Soften tension from your face. Let's have a feel for how informed you are with your body now. How you can notice more how the hands root into the ground. How the arms are strong. How the shoulders stay stable, but you can lift the hips up and away. And you feel that length coming across the armpits. Slowly walk the feet forwards. Hands come to shins, inhale, chest lifts halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, we rise all the way up to standing, really nice. Exhale, hands together in front of the chest. We'll do that on the other side. So I'm facing the other way, but of course you can stay where you are. Inhale, allow the arms to rise up. Exhale, forward fold. Hands to shins, inhale, lift chest. Exhale, land hands, step back into plank. Okay, side plank on the other side. Roll into the outside edge of the right foot. Pick the left arm up into the air. Great. Remember, you can rest on your right knee and your right forearm. And then if you're feeling super mega balanced, brave, pick your left leg up into the air. Yeah, really nice. So notice where the effort is happening in your body. See if you can even out your breath, then extend your left leg away, keep it lifted, then land the left hand and find your way into plank with the left leg lifted. So this takes a lot of core strength to even just hold this. Big breath in, and then as you exhale, hips lift up and away. Left leg is lifted, take a breath in here. And then as you exhale, left knee touches left elbow. See if you can touch your upper arm. 
Inhale, hop out, lift your left leg up and away. Exhale, left knee, left elbow. Really nice, two more times. Inhale, whoosh. exhale, touch the elbow. One more time, breathe in, hop out, leg extends. Breathe out, knee to elbow. Hold it for a breath in, and then as you exhale, land your left foot in between your hands. Land your right heel behind and inhale, let's rise up. Whew. Warrior one, right? Catch your breath a little bit. And then we'll find our way into warrior two. My hope is that you've worked up just a nice, easy sweat, right? Heart rate's lifted just a little. Let's inhale, extend the front leg, reach the arms up, and then exhale, warrior two. Inhale, let the hands touch above the head. And then exhale, warrior two, really nice. One last time, inhale, extend. This time, keep the front leg long, arms at shoulder height, reach left arm out to left, lower it down. Lift the right arm up. Yeah, great, we're in Trikonasana. So, squeeze belly muscles in. Tighten even the side waist, the obliques either side of the belly. Then have a mini micro bend in your left knee. See about reaching right arm with right ear. This might be enough. This can actually be quite a big opener for the hip flexors and the side body. Then if you're feeling good, no pain in the back, reach left arm with left ear. And we do just two rounds of breath. So a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Whew. Take another deep breath in. And then when we exhale, we're gonna let it soften really nice. Land the hands, step your way back into plank. One more vinyasa, inhale. Exhale, lands knees, lands chest. Root down through the feet and inhale, lift the chest up. Exhale, softens the body. Toes tuck, knees hop forwards. Can you press your way up to all fours? Lift your hips up and back. Yeah, really good. Then we're gonna meet at the halfway point of the mat. So walk your feet forwards a bit. Walk your hands back a bit. You've got a forward fold halfway along your mat. Edge your feet outwards, turn your toes outwards, sit your bum down. Malasana, cool. So we're about to move into crow and the way that we're gonna do it is we're gonna work with the most accessible version first, so I'll teach that. Then I'll teach the less accessible version second. And then we'll have one more practice together. So we get to practice three times together. So before we do that, let me face you for a moment. Just start to roll the wrists around in circles. So you can see that the backs of the hands are pressing against each other and the hands keep emerging and then submerging and then emerging again. Yeah, really nice. That's just to soften off the wrists. Great. So I think it's better when I face the side for you guys to see what's going on. So to start the more accessible variation, you've got the elbows inside the knees, press the hands together, lift the chest. Now separate the hands, come up onto your tiptoes and land your hands in front. Your hands are at shoulder width distance, fingers point forwards. Then come even further onto the tiptoes so you can take your weight forwards into your hands. Now what I want you to feel is like you wanna squash your elbows together. So you're gonna use your inner thighs to try and squash your elbows closer together. So what you're doing is you're pressing your inner thighs really hard against your upper arms. Then just try and float the left toes off of the floor and see how that feels, land the left toes. Float the right toes. If that feels all right, then try floating both sets of toes. The key word here is float. If the feet lift, can the bases of the big toes come to touching? 
and then come back down. Yeah, really nice. Back into Malasana. Roll the wrists. So of course, there's a lot going on there. There's it, the inner thigh action, the inner thigh against the upper arm really helps quite a lot in finding a way to lift the knee towards, like towards the chest. It kind of finds a way to engage the hip flexors. Just so we get used to this idea of balance and this idea of core work to keep us all bundled up whilst we're in the air. So if that felt like enough for you, then practice that the next two times. If you're really confident with that, then we'll try the less accessible variation. So this time, for the less accessible variation, fingers point forwards. What you're going to do is lift your bum and edge your feet so they're in line with your hips. Now bend your knees and try and get them nestling in towards your armpits. Notice how I've gone up onto my tiptoes so my knees can nestle up towards my armpits. Take the weight forwards a little bit and then really draw knees to chest. Squeeze belly muscles, draw knees to chest so you've engaged your hip flexors. And again, floating the feet. It's a float, it's not a jump. A jump means that you might hurt your face. Yeah, really good. Hold it for a few rounds of breath, whatever you've got. And then let it soften. Ooh, it's a lot of effort, right? If your wrists are feeling mega tired, I'd say hang out here, do this, roll the hands around. If you're feeling like you want to practice it one more time and your wrists are okay, then we'll give it one more go. I'll teach the less accessible one again, just in case. Um, that's what's needed more. So we're gonna separate the hands, come up onto the tiptoes, land the hands. You're in Malasana and you've just landed your hands in front. Come forwards, squeeze inner thighs against upper arms, like you wanna squash your elbows together. And then use that to play around with floating feet off of the ground. Feel like you can hug the whole of the core in, knees up towards armpits and then let it soften. Yeah, really nice. Great, let's come back to seated. God, we really run out of time on these short ones, don't we? So let's do just a bit of wrist love. Then we'll come down to lying, just do a real quick thing to open up and then we'll, um, we'll take a rest. So this time it's really simple. Palm of right hand against back of left hand. Start to press. Uh, top of left wrist forwards. And we'll do it the other side. So left hand onto top of right hand and we press the right wrist forwards. Really nice, let it soften, let's shake the hands a little bit. Yeah, really good. And then let's find our way down to lying on our backs. So, hands down by the hips. Draw the heels in towards the hips. Keep rooting down through the feet as you inhale. Peel the spine up off of the ground. Feel the inner thighs hug towards each other and then exhale. Roll back down. We'll do that again. We'll incorporate the arms. So inhale, press through the feet. Let the hips and the arms rise up. So you lift and open through the lower part of the torso and the hips. And then exhale, roll all the way back down. Just three more times. Inhale, rise up. And exhale, roll down. Inhale, rise up. And exhale, roll down. One more time. Inhale. Arms rise, hips lift. And then exhale, roll all the way down. At the bottom, give your knees a hug into the chest. 
Let the body rock from side to side. And as you rock the body from side to side, begin to roll the knees around in circles. One way. And then the other way. Now, of course, this was yoga with a bit of a name. There was a posture, like a peak posture at the end. But part of, a very big part of yoga is self-awareness, right? And tapping into um, felt sensations in our body and understanding ourselves better on loads of different levels, not just physically. But today is more physical, isn't it? So... Just for a moment, find a stillness, hug your knees into your chest, have a feel through the whole of your body. Just be really aware of how much more in tune with your body you might be than you were 40 minutes ago. And let's take that into a resting position. So extend your legs. Let the feet fall out to the sides, land the hands by the hips, palms face up. Close your eyes and simply make sure that you are very comfortable. And we rest here. And like I said at the beginning, the mind is really good at wandering. So first, Take your attention into the tips of your fingers and thumbs. Just notice any sensation that's there. And same for the palms of the hands. And take your attention into the tips of all the toes. Notice any sensations there. And the same for the soles of the feet. And notice how you've let go of control of your breath. But watch the gentle rise and fall. Feel for fullness of breath. Comfort and ease. And allow your body to let go of more tension still. Notice if the mind has wandered, if it has, just come back to your breath, sensations in your body. And then allow yourself a really deep breath in. A full inhale all the way to the top of the chest and then a sigh to release. 
If that felt good, we'll do that again. Take a deep breath in. And then a big sigh to release. And then wriggling the fingers and wriggling the toes and rolling through wrists and through ankles and running a nice big stretch that might turn into a yawn. Oh, sorry. Always turns into a yawn for me. And then however you want to find your way up to a comfortable seated position on the mat. We'll close our eyes one final time. It's really important after a practice like this where we're working towards a peak posture that uh, we take effort to practice genuine gratitude towards ourselves whether we managed every part of the class or not we made the effort and the intention was there and we held back when we knew we had to which is way better than forcing ourselves into things so bring your hands together in front of your chest nestle your thumbs in towards your heart space and feel the beating of your heart and send out a big message of gratitude to you, from you, for you. Namaste.